freegrace.in. Hey, welcome to More to the Story. I'm Lucas Kitchen. It is September 1st, 2022, and we're going to talk about another megachurch pastor who has been put on a leave of absence. It seems like we see this all the time. This one seemed a little bit unique to me. Now, I don't want to go into details about who it is uh, because it's hard for me to determine where the line of gossip begins. And so rather than talk about an individual, I want to talk about what happened in this situation. And I want to leave out the details because I want to leave you the option to not feel like you need to go Google it and go find out the juicy details. And so I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, and so if you feel like it's responsible to not go investigate this story, I would invite you to do that. But because I investigated it, because I'm in ministry, I want to share some of these details. I want to share something that this story convicted me of. So in this megachurch pastor who has recently been asked to take a leave of absence, in this case, he did not have a sexual or romantic relationship with someone that wasn't his wife. He had a conversation on direct message on social media with the woman who was not his wife. But his wife knew about the conversation he was having, and she I don't know if she was okay with it or not, but it wasn't romantic. What happened was he had a what they called a level of familiarity and frequency with his messages and it seems like the main infraction in this case was that he was joking around with this woman who is a friend but he was joking with inappropriate language and coarse jesting or coarse joking. Now, if you're not familiar with that phrase, it actually shows up in the Bible, but that is the phrase that they used to talk about this. Uh, it comes up in a verse that you might find familiar. This is in Ephesians 5, 3 through 4, where it says, Among you there must not be, and then it gives a list, but one of the thing, or a couple of things on the list are obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place but rather thanksgiving so i don't know what was said and i don't want to know it's none of my business but it was a reminder to me that even what we say when we think we are in private it really matters and it is convicting to me because this isn't a complaint against that church. I think, you know, they're doing the best they can and trying to figure out what they ought to do. But it's convicting to me because I use a lot of what this verse talks about. Coarse joking. I mean, when I'm with my friends, I say things that I probably shouldn't say. Um, foolish talk. I am, I am constantly in private using foolish talk. Uh, it's out of place. And what, what Paul suggests here is replace all that with thanksgiving. Wow, that's very convicting, and that sounds very difficult for me. But I want to get better at this. And this story with this megachurch pastor has reminded me that I have a bit of a problem. And if my private conversations were dragged out in front of other people, I think I would be pretty embarrassed. And so... Why don't we work on that today? Why don't we pray about that? Why don't we think about how we can improve in this area? And when we hear these stories, let's remember that those in leadership, they're under a lot of strain and they are under a lot of scrutiny and they are expected to be above reproach, but let's also have mercy and grace when we see those kinds of stories. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with you soon.